there are deals to be had, everyone, if you know where to look um, and you don't want to spend $120, which... Happy Monday. Here we go into the studio. Thanks for being here. Hope you had a great long run. Hope you had a great weekend. Got to relax a little bit. Oh man, nothing like a good weekend of running and resting. All about that R&R. All right, what is, oh, don't, don't look yet. What is the shy shoe to cover it up? What is the shoe for $99? Pause the video, guess down below in the comments. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Pause, pause, here we go. The New Balance. Propel V2, New Balance Propel V2, the 90, not under $100, that's always exciting. When a brand new running shoe, neutral road running shoe comes onto the marketplace under that $100 uh, price point. Okay, everyone, the Propel V2 was, many of you probably already know, know this, was inspired by the Fuel Cell Rebel with respect to the overall geometry of the midsole and outsole. Uh, but they realized, you know, the the Rebel, I'm gonna, I loved the Rebel from 2009, the original Rebel from 2019. I thought it was fast, snappy, tempo, tempo day shoe, 100% in the Rebel. But I think what New Balance realized is that it was a little bit of a niche shoe where you can't quite pull off daily training, like a ton of daily training in the Rebel, hence the Propel lineup. So this is the Propel V2, and I'm just going to say right now, if you enjoyed you, who ran in the Nike Pegasus 35 or 36 over the last two years, not the 37 from 2020, but the 35 and 36, immediately as I was taking the Propel V2 out for my test run, immediately the midsole and the ride of this of this shoe was reminding me of the, especially the Pegasus 35 with respect to the upper and the midsole ride. So anyway, just want to put that out there. If you enjoyed the Pegasus 35 ride, I think you will enjoy the Pegasus or the uh, Propel V2 ride. All right, let's jump into it. Six millimeter drop from heel to toe, 27 millimeter stack height in the heel, 21 millimeter in the forefoot. For women's size eight, we're looking at 8.1 ounces or 229 grams. For men's size nine, we're looking at nine 9.5 ounces or 270 grams and in my size let's put it on the scale 8.7 ounces in my size 8.7 ounces or 249 grams on the upper we're looking at an engineer mesh upper okay pretty standard basic mesh upper now what's crazy remember from a couple days ago where is it there it is so i don't know if you i'll just hold it up can you see the difference through the toe box with respect to scrunching up of the mesh uppers. Now, I will say the propel, or sorry, the prism, all right, a stability shoe from two days ago is more breathable through the toe box. Keep that in mind if you live in very warm temperature, uh, warm areas, but this upper, uh, the engineered mesh is not scrunching up through the toe box. So that's really, really good. Um, overall, not a really plush upper with respect to the collar of the shoe and the heel counter. Let's do the test here. Fairly stout, but I can bend it, okay? And I am gonna say the heel flare is not as pronounced in the uh, propel versus the prism. Uh, now, here's one issue, is the lockdown. I did not feel incredibly secure through the lockdown over the midfoot. The heel was fine. I felt fine, like I didn't feel like I was slipping out of the shoe at all with respect to the heel, but for some reason, this uh, the eyelet chain was not locking on. Uh, and now this is just my first run, not my, fir not my full review. We'll see if this makes it to 50 miles. I'm not, uh, not counting the eggs before they hatch. I'll just put it that way for the Propel V2. Onto that midsole, the heart of the shoe, the fuel cell midsole foam. Let's do the durometer test with the thumbs. There we go. Softer with the thumb test than I expected versus the ride. And there's my score for the ride. Overall, the ride did not feel snappy or responsive at all, okay? Just keep that in mind if you're thinking about this shoe. Uh, it didn't feel like I was getting a ton of energy return through the foot strike of this fuel cell. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, well, I already mentioned it, the $99 price point, hard to argue against that price price point. So I, I wish I, oh man, I wish companies would release, I wish New Balance would release the differences in basically the engineering side of shoes, you know, same midsole material between the prism and the, uh, and the, and the propel, but like how much dense, like what's the actual production process looks, look like with respect to putting how, like how much uh, fuel cell midsole foam are they stuffing into these midsoles for the outsole, the bottom of the shoe, look at all that blown rubber. It's going to increase the durability prediction, but here's the issue, everybody. Uh, even though the durometer is fine, like it's got some give to it, I did feel like I was slapping the pavement out there uh, through the foot strike in this Propel V2. It did not feel, um, it didn't feel like the rubber was very forgiving underfoot is what I'm trying to say. So overall, not an incredible score for the outsole. I think they could 100% drop, you know, half the blown rubber, uh, especially, you know, just leave it under the forefoot. If you're striking forefoot, I guess if you're striking midfoot, maybe you would want it there. But overall, I think they could drop half of this rubber there uh, under the outsole. For the fit, I went true to size, no issues with the length of the shoe, but I was swimming through the toe box. So I mentioned this actually in the prism a little bit as well. If you have a high volume of foot, like your foot has high volume through your forefoot, maybe this toe box would be more filled. But I did feel like I was swimming around just a little too much through that toe box. So keep that in mind for fit. Uh, but again, no issues with the heel slipping uh, out of that heel pocket at all. Um, overall, pretty pleased uh, with the fit. Although, yeah, I, man, actually, I, I just thought of this. See that eyelet chain? I wonder, that's interesting actually. Oh, that is it. I just noticed this right now. I wonder why. I, I'm just looking at another shoe here. I think this eyelet chain could come down another set of holes. I, it's, it's like it's a it's a long uh, toe box there before the eyelet chain starts. So maybe that's the issue is that I'm just not and that connects to the lockdown as well. For my comfort, no surprise here. Not a great score for the comfort. I think uh, the you know the uh, the upper is not horrible, but again I think that I, I think the midsole is great, but I think this outsole rubber is just a little a little rigid, a little hard, so that dropped the comfort score quite a bit. It didn't feel really comfortable underfoot as I was out there testing it. Uh, for my positive, I'm gonna go, of course, that price point. Can't beat the price point. For my drawback, definitely uh, the lockdown over the midfoot, The la I should say the lack of lockdown over the midfoot, and now I'm gonna add in there, I think this eyelet chain could come down just about another half an inch, just put another set of holes there, just to help improve the lacing, the. Uh, the, the relationship between the eyelet chain and the overall upper to help with that lockdown feel. Durability prediction is pretty high. I'm gonna go 500 plus. I almost went 600 plus, which is a good sign. So I'd say, I think this shoe could go quite a ways, especially with that blown rubber on the outsole. Uh, I guess the big test would be the upper resiliency. Man, I don't know, I mean, it feels pretty, and it does have, I didn't mention this, it has some pretty good overlay to help protect that uh, that upper resilience. So, you know, here on the, on, the, on the medial side and the lateral side, just some rubber overlay, and through the heel counter, frankly. So, I'm gonna stick with 500 miles for my durability prediction. How will I use the Propel V2? Who is it best for? I'm gonna go with Easy Day and Daily Trainer, but you could absolutely take this out on a, on a middle distance or long run, okay? It might be a little more challenging for a tempo day. It's a little heavy for a tempo day and just not incredibly responsive. Let's do the twist test, do a little dance here. Yeah, it's gotta dance, and then let's do this as well. Yeah, I mean, it's fine, but I, I don't see it being incredibly responsive out there for faster paces. Who is it best for? Pinching pennies, like, you know, $99. Again, and yes, the price point, $99. Very high score for the price point. It's just hard to argue against uh, that price point for a brand new shoe. Uh, so that's, if you, you know, like I'm thinking, you know, high schoolers who are looking for a daily trainer for cross country coming up, which actually it was just announced yeah, I think, oh, I better watch what I say. I gotta watch, but anyway, rumors are starting to percolate that the cross country season is going to happen, 
but the football season is not going to happen because it's contact. But you know, cross country, you're a little more spread out. It'll be interesting to see how it all unfolds, but pinching pennies. Oh, I also wanted to mention the Propel V1 uh, on running warehouse still has some sizes available. So if you liked the Propel V1 on uh, you're interested in saving even more money, $68 for the Propel V1, but the sizes are a little are limited. So they're going fast. They're selling out fast now that the Propel V2 is on the marketplace. There you have it. Now let's help each other out down in the comments. Come on now, let's butter that bread, save some money for everybody. What has been the most affordable running shoe that you have enjoyed and it's it's treated you well, you've gotten good mileage out of it, that has been the most affordable. So two factors there. For people that are saving money out there, go down into the comments and re and if you could share like why you liked that shoe and I'm guessing like if you could keep those prices under $100, there are there are deals to be had everyone. If you know where to look, um, and you don't want to spend $120, which, you know, is not a horrible price point, but like that, there's a lot of shoes that are under even $90 that are out there that are brand new shoes. So anyway, that's the question of the day. Help each other out. And that's it. Have a great Monday. Uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Onward and upward. You know what? Oh man, uh, so many things to do on the YouTube channel, but I should probably make a playlist all about affordable running shoes. Would that be of interest to folks out there? Like the best affordable running shoes. I'll think about it. But anyway, if I'll, I'll toss it back to the New Balance running shoe playlist for now. New Balance running shoe playlist right there, right there, right there. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.